Hey everyone, I'm going to walk you through today my real estate equity waterfall model. Now keep in, mo keep in mind this model is not standalone, so it, it assumes that you incorporate, incorporate it into your own model uh, and that you've modeled to levered before tax cash flow. Now you can have scenarios up to 15 years, but it is calculated on an annual basis. The model uses an IRR waterfall technique where the sponsor can be uh, offered a disproportionate share of the promote for exceeding certain IRR hurdles. And this is a great incentive. Uh, this is a way to incentivize the sponsor to perform perhaps better than projected to reach outsized returns while protecting the limited partners and uh, returns to a certain level, uh, what we might call the preferred return. So let's get started and I'll, and I'll explain uh, how the model is set up. Uh, go, feel free to use this as you wish to change it. Um, and let me know if you find errors in the model. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to determine the equity split between the sponsor and his or her investors. So uh, you buy a property, you as a sponsor perhaps don't have enough equity to close on the property, you go out and you line up limited investors. Uh, the investors agree to put in 95%, you put in 5%. Now in this particular scenario, uh, it's a property that requires 50 million in equity. And by simply changing this blue fonted cell here to include how much, uh, what percentage of equity the sponsor is gonna put in, the uh, model automatically calculates then the equity. Now, the total equity number is calculated by taking the sum of all of the negative values from your levered before tax cash flow. Uh, if that is not correct, and in some cases it's not, right? So you might have a year where you have to have an equity infusion, uh, and then you get cash flow that year, which in, ends up making the, the, uh, the uh, cash flow number in that year positive, but there was actually some equity infused into the deal, you'll, you can just come in and manually input the total equity in this cell here. But as, as it is, it's defaulted where it's just going to take the sum of all negative cash flows and call that your total equity. Based on that total equity, it's going to take a percentage um, to the percentage you drop in here, it's going to automatically calculate then uh, the percentage for the LP investors and the amount for both the sponsor and the LP investor. And based on this split here, you'll notice that we come down here to the returns. And you'll see the total distributions to the LP, the contributions from the LP, the profit, which is the difference between the two, the IRR to the LP, 13.24%, uh, 13 and then the equity multiple, which, uh, which is the number of times that the LP's contribution or the, the LP's equity was increased. Uh, so 2.76 is this number times 2.76 gives us the uh, total distributions. And then you'll notice a set, the similar here for the sponsor and what you have are the exact same returns. Now the reason that we have the exact same returns is that as it's currently structured in our promote structure, uh, regardless of the, of the profitability of this deal, the sponsor and the LP are sharing the profits pro rata. 2.5% to the sponsor, 97.5% to the LP. What this model allows us to do is to give the sponsor uh, a higher percentage of the promote as, or, or a disproportionate share of the promote as certain IRR hurdles are met. So what we do and how to, how to show that is we first come down here and again, any blue fonted cell or our input cells, we're going, going to drop in first what we call the prefer return. Uh, we're going to call it 8%. And what this is saying here is under 8% or up to 8%, the profits are shared pro rata based on equity contribution. But then we say, what if, what if the sponsor hits 10%? Well, we as the LP perhaps might want to reward the sponsor for exceeding that 8% preferred return uh, that, that we wanted. And so we're going to say, hey, look, in the, in the event that you hit higher than 8% up to a certain threshold, which we'll talk about in a second, we're, gonna, we're going to give you a disproportionate share. We're going to give you 10%. Uh, so LP gets 90, sponsor gets 10. Now again, recall the sponsor has 2.5%, uh, 
Uh, and so really the sponsor gets 12.25% of the um, of returns up uh, above 8%. And the LP gets 87.75%. And really this 87.75 is calculated as the LP's uh, a proportionate share of equity contribution multiplied by that 90%, and that gives us the 87.75%. We're going to say, okay, up to 10% IRR, that is going to be the split. Above 10%, we're going to call the split 25%. We're going to say, hey, look, if you can exceed 10%, we're going to be really happy, and we're going to give you an even higher share, 75% uh, to the LP, 25% to the sponsor, which based on the uh, actual equity contribution, gives us 73.13% to the LP and this to the sponsor, uh, again, above 10%. And we're gonna say above 10% up to 15%, that's a split. Then we're gonna say, hey, look, we're the LP, hey, Mr. Sponsor, you did a, a great job, and so above 15%, we're gonna give you 50, and it's gonna be 50-50. And so what that does is, again, uh, tells the sponsor uh, or encourage the sponsor to to get those outsized returns. And with that, we can come down and see now that the return to the LP versus the sponsor is different now. Uh, the sponsor uh, sees an IRR of over 30%. Their equity multiple is 12 times. Um, they really did well because in this particular case, if you notice here, the levered IRR of the, the property level return was 13.24%. So what that meant is they never hit this 15% uh, because the property only returned 13.24%, but uh, they, did, they did get into the promote here and here on these two uh, hurdles. And as a result, saw some pretty significant returns. Finally, uh, again, just for how you incorporate it into your own model, you're gonna drop in this cell here your analysis start date, or whenever you anticipate purchasing the property or breaking ground in your construction or whatever it may be, this is the start date. And then this is the stream of cash flows in each year. Time zero being in the event of a purchase, this is when you, when you purchase the property. Um, again, this is levered, so this is assuming debt. So uh, you, you layered some sort of debt on, this is the equity that you put in. And then these are the returns every single year. And then you'll notice in year 10, a uh, much larger number, there's a disposition, a sale of the property. Uh, this is the net uh, gain from the sale after uh, paying off debt and, and after covering selling costs. And bringing those all together, it runs through the different hurdles, calculates there a summary of your investor level returns, and then again, as we talked about here, are your return results. Uh, if you have any questions about how you might be able to incorporate this into your own model, uh, feel free to go ahead and email either myself or Mike. And uh, thank you for your time.